Razorback Armory isn't just a gun store, it's a true gun concierge. If you are looking for attachments, if you're looking for accessories, if you're looking for safety products, Razorback Armory is who you want to go to. They're in De Pair on Manchester Road, just a half mile east of 270. Razorback Armory, your full-service firearm shop that strives to be the area's premier destination for firearm enthusiasts. Stop in and introduce yourself to Brad, Kenny, and Jesse. Find them at RazorbackArmory.com and tell them Bo sent you. How do you order food for the office these days? How do you make sure it's on time and as ordered? How can you get it individually packaged? How? Easy Cater. When you order on EasyCater.com, the food comes as ordered and on time 98% of the time. And when there's a problem, which is practically never... Thank you for calling Easy Cater. You can reach someone in about nine seconds. How do you order 24-7 from more than 80,000 restaurants? How? Easy Cater. Order 24-7 on EasyCater.com. 97.1 FM Talk Podcast. It sits above the mantle on a couple rusty nails And it's worth a bunch of money, but it damn sure ain't for sale The good Lord you figured only it out, knows Bo. all the stories Come on, get to the point, here it is Granddaddy's gun Yeah Bo figured it out Second Amendment Radio on the Great Outdoors that's Blake Shelton. Did you know that was Blake? I did not know that was Blake. He just got married, didn't he? That's Mark Cox. Yep, Gwen Stefani and him got married at his ranch over the weekend. Nice. Welcome to Second Amendment ranch. Radio on the Great Outdoors. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Bo. Yourself? I'm good, man. Good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, well, let's start the show off with a sponsorship from Razorback Armory. They are St. Louis County's premier gun store catering to gun enthusiasts and their Second Amendment rights, and that's why we love them, and that's why they love this show. Uh, and you can go to RazorbackArmory.com to find them. Hey, anybody knock on your door this week? <laughs> if so, just I'm going to tell you something. As rural as I live, if somebody's knocking on my door, we got real problems. Yeah. Do, do you are you one of those guys that has like the the driveway alarm, like the thing that that you can submit motion sensor you can put it in your driveway so you can tell if somebody's driving up? Hundred percent. Do you? Yeah. yeah Game you cams all over the place. Can't sneak up on Bo Matthews. My wife's a better shot than I am, so look out for her. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're glad that you're uh, you're with us this week on Second Amendment Radio and the Great Outdoors, and uh, we are going to be talking uh, about CCW coming up here uh, a little later in the show today. That that's important to me. Always has been. I've been a concealed carry uh, license holder since the very minute it was legal in the state of Missouri, and I'm a firm believer in the in getting the training if you're going to carry the gun. Absolutely, it's Absolutely. for legal reasons and common sense reasons and. I've been through a couple of the courses myself, including advanced concealed carry, and and it's going to talk more about where you can get that done in an, an event that's coming up uh, pretty soon. So we're looking forward to that. Absolutely. And uh, the thing is, is getting familiar with it. Uh, we always talk about, it, even Sheriff Marshak mentions, you know, when when something's happening, you go to your basic level, the most basic level of training you had, which means your heart rate's up and all that bad stuff. Uh, you've got to be prepared. And so training... Can, did I mention the the experience motorcycle riding training I did? I I did. I've been riding mini bikes, motorcycles all my life, and it was a promotion at Doc's Harley Davidson. They said we want you to do this advanced uh, class and nice. host it. You know, kind of give away. You know, whatever. And I learned so much. Yeah. And it's like, whoa! I could have died a hundred times. What is a thing that you think people should know about about advanced motorcycle training? Uh, when you're taking a right curve on a on a road, you actually push your right handlebar to the you push it forward and you lean into it helps you lean it's just one crazy thing but if you ride motorcycles take the advanced training just a tip yeah no <laughs> kidding you might have saved someone's life today but that's awesome good that's, job that's what we're after here all the time anyway uh you know one thing that i've been talking about this week is is this foid reform in the state of Illinois. And it's a big deal because anytime J.B. Pritzker is in favor of something regarding guns, it's it's bad for the gun owner. Illinois has a long history of ignoring the Second Amendment, and the FOID card's a great example of it. I mean, it's already tied up in court right now. They're trying to get rid of it altogether. In the meantime, they've reformed it 
and they want you to believe that this is in your best interest. Right now, we want to welcome in Valinda Rowe. She's uh, uh, with uh, the uh, Illinois Concealed Carry uh, Group, and she's talking to us more about the FOID card issue. Valinda, great to have you back on the radio again. How are you? Well, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, you know, this uh, you you opened my eyes to this because there are there are some groups uh, in Illinois that are that are pro second amendment groups, but that for some reason took sort of a hands-off approach, a neutral position on this FID card issue and and there's a lot people need to know about what's in here. Right. Uh, I'm the spokesperson for IllinoisCarry.com, and we were opposed to the bill, very strongly opposed to it, for uh, a couple of three really, we think, egregious um, pieces that are in this. Uh, It's called the Floyd Modernization Act, and uh, our opinion is calling this a modernization bill is kind of like putting new tires and a bumper on a rickety old Model A (laughs) and calling it a sports car. You've still got a rickety old Model A when you get done, and the the Floyd system doesn't need to be modernized. It needs to be abandoned. It needs to be repealed. Well, no, that's very true. And in fact, there's been a court decision basically pointing that out that, you know, why do you need an FOID card? You already have to go through a background check to buy a firearm, and the United States Constitution says you have the right uh, to keep and bear arms. Exactly. There is a case that has gone uh, up to the Illinois Supreme Court. We're waiting on a on uh, the different parties to submit their briefs and for the Illinois Supreme Court to issue a final ruling on it. Yeah. Well, I hope they do. And how long has the Floyd card been around, that, that whole process? I think it all started back in 1968. Wow. Okay, so it's been tough. So when you guys look at uh, what Missouri does... Is there anything that you're taking out of our legislation, uh, including the SAPL, that could help what your mission is in Illinois? We have followed Missouri very closely from the very beginning. Uh, Illinois Carry was founded in 2004, right about the time that you passed your concealed carry uh, law. Right. And we visited with the folks in Missouri that helped get that done and said, you know, what do we need to do in Illinois? How can we get concealed carry? You know, what, what's the process that you followed? And uh, they gave us three major points to follow, and we did, and we we were successful in getting that done with the help of the courts ruling that the ban on concealed carry could not stand. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. You had to go to court to finally force Illinois to allow concealed carry. Then they went through, you have to jump through hoops and go through 16 hours of training and all these other things, and there's no reciprocity with, is there reciprocity with any other state right now with Illinois? No, there is not. I didn't think so. There are about six states that can take the Illinois training and can apply for an Illinois license. But their license in their home state is not recognized in just, the state of Illinois. Just so ridiculous. Is there any lawmakers, uh, Belinda? Is there any lawmakers that look at the headlines every Monday and look back and go, "It's not the law-abiding gun owners that are causing these problems." I mean, is it is it moving the needle at all in favor of law-abiding gun owners? Well, we have several really good legislators who point that out, uh, and they have filed bills to repeal the FOID Act. Uh, because they know this is an unfair burden on law-abiding uh, citizens of Illinois. Yeah, well, it absolutely is. Th- three people killed, 19 shot in Chicago yesterday, or, or the day before yesterday. Isn't it? How many, how many, poli- how many police were involved? Um, I, I'm not sure. None. Well, well, you mean in terms of the shoot people shot? Yeah, oh, right. yeah, right, right, right. That, yeah, it was. And, and what this, what this, uh, well, it's on the governor's desk waiting for his signature. This modernization act. Uh, for the void, uh, it is not going to do one single thing against those violent crimes that are committed against innocent people. The the whole idea is, of this bill uh, that's supposed to, well, they say it's going to be a means to reduce violent crime, and all <laughs> it's, it's going to do just the opposite. Absolutely. It's going to make it that much more difficult for law-abiding people to protect themselves and their families. Yeah. So dangerous, so uh, dangerous. Now, uh, when we look at uh, the, the, the political map, the red and the blue states that are out there, if you look at Illinois, it's red pretty much everywhere except a couple of different spots, and yet it's a blue state. How, Correct. How can uh, because how, the blue outnumbers the red. I understand, and it's not we don't vote by acreage. I get that, but how right. how can law abiding 
gun owners and Second Amendment supporters help with this effort? Is it calling? Is it is? And I and I say this because we always say, call your governor, call your representative, call. But people don't really do that, I don't think. But how okay, can we, we get them to do it? Uh, at Illinois Carry, our our battle is fought on three fronts. One is the uh, electoral front. That's the elections. You've got to get out and find candidates for office that support the Second Amendment. I mean, truly support it. Not just say, I support the Second Amendment, but it's where they say, I support the Second Amendment, period. Um, So that's the first front. The second front is the uh, judicial front with the uh, lawsuits in the courts. And uh, so we've got to have people, and we have found people who are very brave and very uh, willing to stand up and fight. And the third front is the legislative front, and that's where, uh, you know, we try our best to oppose these bills. Uh, This legislation that's proposed that's going to restrict firearm owners uh, to do witness slips, follow our uh, discussion forum on our website so that you'll know, subscribe to our email alerts so you'll know when phone calls and witness slips need to be submitted. And that's uh, IllinoisCarry.com, right? Yes, IllinoisCarry.com. Yeah. yeah, Valinda Rowe, our guest right now on Second Amendment Radio. And, and let me get back to the to the issues with this, this Foyd Modernization Act. Yes. What, what you're saying here is that effectively this is the beginning of a firearms registry in Illinois, because they talk about this gun show loophole all the time, uh, this this universal background check issue, this modernization act in the state of Illinois is effectively going to police you selling a gun to your neighbor, correct? Right, right. It is going to uh, require that anyone who makes a private transfer, that's a person-to-person transfer, uh, when they purchase a firearm, they will have to register that purchase with a federally licensed firearm dealer, okay? And in Illinois, those are now, our FFLs are now under the auspices of the Illinois State Police and the state government. So whenever, if I were to um, sell you a a firearm in a private transfer, well, no, you're in Missouri. Take that back. If I sell a a firearm to a person in Illinois, um, they would have 10 days after that purchase to submit the record of that purchase to a federal licensed dealer. So, and that record has to main, has to include uh, name, address, all your personal information, but it also has to include make, model, and serial number of that firearm. Ooh. So that is giving the government the record of a private transfer of a firearm in the state of Illinois. There's no mm-hmm. question that that is not registration of private sales in Illinois. Yeah, I, that's absolutely what it is. What the, and then oh. the FFL, they don't have to accept your your record. They can say, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with this. So you've got to find an FFL that's willing to take the record. If you are in Chicago, do you know how many FFLs there are in the city of Chicago? No. I think there's one. Oh, my. And that is at a private museum. So you've got to find an FFL dealer outside the city that will accept your record. And, and they can charge up to $25, so that's an extra burden on the person. They've got to pay another $25 to get an FFL to accept this record. Uh, but the FFL doesn't have to take it. They can refuse. If you don't remember, say, 15, 20, 15, up to 20 years later, if you don't remember which FFL you sent that record to, then the first violation of that is a misdemeanor but the second violation is a felony a felony yep. okay so you've got to remember for 20 years where you admitted that record it's amazing what uh what does it cost for an illinois resident from beginning to end uh to become a concealed carry holder uh in in the state of illinois because here it's like what 90 dollars for the class a hundred dollars for the permit and you're on your way Okay, in Illinois, first you've got to have the FOID card, so that's 10 bucks. Okay. Uh, plus some change. Uh, you have to do it online, so if you use a, uh, a check, it's one amount. If you use a credit card, there's a server fee, service fee on it. Um, so you've got to have that first. Then you've got to take 16 hours. If you're just a regular, you don't have prior training in military or, or some other uh, acceptable prior training, you've got to take the 16 hours 
of training. Um, the cost for that varies throughout the state, anywhere from 100 to 150 or more okay. to get the training. Once you have the training, you have to submit uh, your application, which is $150, and there's service fees on that, whether you use a, a check or credit card. Sure. Okay. Wow. So I, I'm, I'm always, any, any headline we see, I always mark, I always want to follow the money. And right. it's not a real big moneymaker in the state of Illinois at this point. I'm, you know, people are probably going through the process, but I don't know. Uh, to, to have a Second Amendment, a federal Second Amendment, and not be able to get to it any, any easier is just ludicrous to me. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, I would agree. The other thing about the FOID card, just very quickly, they they'll they'll ask you if you voluntarily want to submit your fingerprints. Right. Okay. So With you a... can if you voluntarily submit your fingerprints, <laughs> uh, they promise that they will automatically renew your FOID card every ten years. Um, But the problem with voluntary fingerprints, the anti-Second Amendment groups and Democratic leadership in the state of Illinois have been wanting mandatory fingerprints for decades uh, to get this FOID card. And they didn't have the votes to get the mandatory fingerprints. So they went for second best. Let's start with voluntary. And we know how that goes. We know the slippery slope that once that's voluntary, how long does it take for them to come back? And they, they won't stop with that. They will come back next session still pushing for mandatory fingerprints. Oh, of course uh, they will. Another thing about the fingerprints is that they also, if you voluntarily submit your fingerprints, they'll automatically renew every 10 years your FOID card, but they'll also renew it with every firearm you purchase at a federally licensed firearm dealer. Okay? So every time you do that, they will extend your expiration date. It will get bumped down the road with every purchase that you make well, from a licensed dealer. as they track you. Yeah, as they track you. As they track you. Yeah. Now, on top of this, the monthly average of FFL uh, purchases last year was around 53000 Okay? That's per month. If even a small percentage of these involve fingerprinted FOID cards, how is the ISP going to keep up with that on top of all the regular renewals? That's a great point. Plus, they're going to have long lines of criminals trying to register their guns so that the authorities can, can keep up with them, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You right. don't even have to say you're being sarcastic. We you better think. not be. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Valinda Rowe, thank you so much. IllinoisCarry.org is the website. We appreciate you keeping us up to date on this attempt uh, to uh, force a gun registry in Illinois. Thank you. The, dot org or you dot com. Glad, glad dot. to help out. And thank you so much for helping get the word out to law-abiding gun owners in okay. the state of Illinois. Is it dot org or dot com? Dot com. Ah, got it. Okay. All right. So, so that north and south Illinois is not looking too bad at this point. No, that's true. <laughs> oh, we're done. We're done. Thanks, Valinda. <laughs> Thank you. All right, showtime. You ready? Born ready. Great. Did you bring the dongle? What's a dongle? Never mind. We'll just show them on your laptop. I was supposed to bring my laptop? Don't panic. You shared the presentation with me, right? I forgot. Well, if you log in, then we can... My password. I was, uh, I was about to say I forgot my password. You ordered the food through Easy Cater, right? Yes. We'll be fine. Food can make or break a presentation, so make sure you order at EasyCater.com. Individually packaged food, delivered right on time. How? Easy Cater. Razorback Armory isn't just a gun store, it's a true gun concierge. If you are looking for attachments, if you are looking for accessories, if you're looking for safety products, Razorback Armory is who you want to go to. They're in DePair on Manchester Road, just a half mile east of 270. Razorback Armory, your full-service firearm shop that strives to be the area's premier destination for firearm enthusiasts. Stop in and introduce yourself to Brad, Kenny, and Jesse. Find them at RazorbackArmory.com and tell them Bo sent you. If it can get your blood pumping, I'm not sure what will. Second Amendment Radio and the Great Outdoors here. I'm Mark Cox, along with Bo Matthews. Glad you're uh, spending some time with us. I'll tell you what, uh, I believe and you believe that training is one of the utmost important things in this world when it comes to the Second Amendment. If you own one gun or a hundred guns, 
training, cleaning them, getting familiar with them is so important. But there's a lot of people that support the Second Amendment that don't want to carry a gun. And I had a, uh, a, a guy that I just met last week. His name is Lee Crop, and he uh, owns, he's part owner of Crossfire CCW in Eureka. And he was telling me about a, a program that's really for anybody, whether you carry a gun or not. And it's a program that's happening next week, uh, and it's called Vive the Shoot. And that's why we want to welcome him on the program. Uh, for anybody, you support Second Amendment, you just want to survive. Lee, welcome to Second Amendment Radio on the Great Outdoors, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're going. Yeah, We're doing, doing good. great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it, it, kind of in a nutshell, tell us what Survive the Shoot is all about. Well, we have this program uh, where we have a, a, one of our instructors is Brock Green. He's actually a federal police officer, and he's a paramedic on uh, their SWAT uh, team. And it's basically it's, it's setting ourselves up in case something happens. And as you watch the news, you see shootings every day. It seems like they're on the rise. And what happens if you get caught in a crossfire? Uh, how are you going to survive? Because when the police are coming, their first uh, job is to stop the threat, and you aren't really going to be a priority. And so we have to take it upon ourselves to make sure that we survive. Lee, I think, long and short of it. yeah, I think that is just, it's just such a great point. You know, I'm sitting home the other day watching the coverage of the shooting at the West County Mall. And I'm having this conversation with my wife. She goes, well, maybe we just don't go there anymore because I don't want to risk that. And I'm like, well, I don't think we should give up that easily. And she said, well, you talk a big game and you're a concealed carry holder, but that doesn't stop you from getting shot by some idiot who just opens fire in the middle of the mall. And, and to, you know, I have to admit, she had a point there. You have to you have to have situational awareness. So what are some of the key things that people need to know in a situation like that that's going to be shared in this class? Well, we're going to uh, share some of the things we also teach in our concealed carry class. And a lot of it is situational awareness, like you said, identifying potential threats. Um, not getting involved with things that don't uh, concern you. Um, uh, at Crossfire, one of the big, big leading questions we have is, is today the worst day of my life? And we want to avoid that. And so the biggest thing is avoidance. You identify those threats. You make sure that if something's going on, you get away from it. You know, I'm not a, a proponent of living my life in fear. Uh, there are places I just don't go. And it's not mainly because I don't want to. But if I want to go to the mall, I'm going to go. But I'm going to make sure that I have my head on a swivel. I'm going to pay attention to the things that are going on around me. And if it looks like there's going to be trouble, I'm going to exit. Yeah. You know, I, in the first segment of this program, I compared uh, advanced uh, gun training to advanced motorcycle lessons. And I'll say this, that when I did that advanced training, uh, I treated riding a motorcycle down the highway as a video game. I'm constantly watching what the guy on the right's doing, the guy on the left doing, the guy behind me is doing. You've got to be aware of your surroundings all the time. When my wife goes, you mentioned your wife. Let me talk about my beautiful wife. She uh, she goes to you know the grocery store. Of all, you know, just going to the grocery store. She has been aware. Um, that's a white panel van. There's two guys hanging out by it. They're not bringing groceries in or taking them out. You know, doing anything like that. It just seems weird. You've got to be aware. So uh, let's dig deep a little bit more, uh, Lee, into Survive the Shoot. Uh, you've got room for how many people in this class? Uh, this class is going to be 20 people. Uh, it's going to be $99. It is July 14th from 6 to 8. And uh, it's going to be a lot of great information. Um, we're going to have some products there that you can buy, that you can carry, that are very simple. Um, but the whole key is um, learning what we have to do in order to uh, live another day if we happen to get caught in a bad situation. And do you promote uh, uh, mace or some of these sprays or gels that are out there? Oh, we're always into the non-lethal. Uh, the, the firearm should always be the last resort. Uh, but, you know, as we talked the other day, you know, you, you don't know if or when. Um, it was kind of funny the other day we were talking with Howard and his wife, he was going to the store to get milk, and his wife was like, why are you arming up? And then the next day, the King's grocery store happened. You know, you just don't know when someone's going to go off the handle and do something stupid. And, you know, if, if you happen to be in the crossfire at the time, uh, our goal here is to uh, make sure that you survive it and your loved ones survive. Yeah. I'll always be prepared is the motto we heard when we were scouts. But right. even as adults, you know, that's, a, that's just such a great point because... I had a guy say to me one time when I first went through my concealed carry training, um, he's like, listen, you, you, it takes a little getting used to, but you should wear your gun so much that you feel naked if you don't have it on. And I'll have to tell you, uh, I've left the house before in a hurry to get somewhere and ended up half a mile or two from home, realized 
suddenly that I didn't have it and drove back and got it. Sure. It's it's it just get you need to make it a habit if you choose to defend yourself because ultimately you may end up defending someone else as well. Yeah, after meeting Brock Green, uh, I've gotten to the habit where I, I have a tourniquet on me at all times too. Uh, yeah. Because wow. you know, all these things come into play. You know, you're going to carry a firearm. You might have to use it, and it's not going to be like going to the range where you're shooting at a piece of paper. There's a chance there may be bullets coming towards you, and so you know, there's just so much more. There's a whole mindset that you have to get behind, uh, and we we usually call it the, the warrior's mindset. You have to be prepared if you're going to be carrying this firearm to use it, and you, there's a possibility you might get shot too. Yeah. Okay. Back to the class, Lee. Survive the shoot. Does one need to bring a firearm with them to this class? No. This is basically just a first aid class. Um, it's not, not even. Not even it's, it's more. Uh, you know, tourniquets, things like this, avoidance, uh, what to look for. Um, we've had a lot of great videos that are going to be played showing uh, officers in the line of duty that have been injured and what they have to do to survive. Um, they can book the class at CrossfireCCW.com. It's ninety nine dollars, and it's going to be a great time. Well, and what are you doing? Are you doing it in the Eureka area? Yeah, our shop is an old town Eureka. We're right above the Mexican restaurant there in town called Ola. Yeah, uh, they got a great restaurant and even better stuff upstairs. Been there, <laughs> been there many times, and we'll be back down there in that area again tonight. So I get it. Uh, yeah, and uh, so you got twenty limited on this class, uh, and and if this fills up for you, uh, and the demand is there, uh, will you do it again, or do you already have it planned to oh, yes. do it again? Yeah, we're, we're planning on uh, making this uh, part of our curriculum. Uh, it's going to be probably once a month that we're going to do this in the evening. Okay. That's good. Like so uh, C- Crossfire CCW tells me that you do a whole lot more than just this class. Uh, is it regular concealed carry and advanced concealed carry? I mean, how far down that road do you go with your training? Yeah, we do the concealed carry, we do the advanced concealed carry, and then we do a lot of one-on-one classes. Um in our, most of our advanced school classes, we like to do them one-on-one because I don't know what everyone's skill level is, and we like to cater it to the individual. Um, the, when I was doing larger classes like that, I'd find that there was, first off, nobody ever wants to be considered a basic a shooter. <laughs> Everybody who owns guns seems to think that they're advanced. Nobody wants and to be so, basic in life. <laughs> no, of course not. But, but there's a lot of skill sets, and there are a lot of things that people just don't ever think about, and a lot of them are aha moments. And I've, I've experienced those things in my life, too, where all of a sudden you're, oh, simple things that you just never would have thought about. And we've had years and years and years of experience, and we share that, that information with you. Okay. But in the, the, the advanced classes, well, like I said, I like to sit down with you, maybe your wife, maybe a friend. But I like to judge the skill level because I don't want to have somebody that is uh, a true beginner taking attention away from somebody who's more advanced that wants to get more advanced. That's a good point. And, and vice versa. I, so I, I, we, we care to those to each individual. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. And, and you, you have to um, help people determine their level of comfort. I would imagine that can be an uncomfortable conversation sometimes because you can have people that feel like they want to carry, but then they don't really want to carry. And and how do you how do you handle that, Lee? Well, you know, it's all personal decisions. You know, I tell everybody, you know, like just because I do something doesn't mean you have to. Um, we have a lot of people that after class, they don't want to carry because it is a huge responsibility. But we do express to everybody that, you know, you can go your whole life and never have a situation. You yes. might have one tomorrow. You don't know. But if you're not to carry, doesn't mean that you're not going to be a victim. But these are all personal choices. And in our concealed carry class, what we actually really focus on is the avoidance portion. You know, uh, another question that we uh, drive into our students' heads is, uh, what's, the, what's the best and worst outcome of the situation? If I see someone who scares me, I could walk by them and maybe I'll be fine, but maybe I won't be. And so maybe it's better that I cross the street. You know, yeah. now if I hurt their feelings, that's too bad. But I look at, you know, um, profiling is about self-preservation. You know, it's about sustaining my life, making sure that I live to see another day. And if I happen to hurt your feelings because I crossed the street, that's just tough. Right. I don't care. And it doesn't matter if you're white, black, or Hispanic. It doesn't matter. If you scare me, I am going someplace else because in my life, I carry a firearm that I don't want to use. I do like the avoidance model. Yeah, I a really do. Point. Lee, I want to mention uh, also something I learned about Crossfire CCW. You do teach classes in Eureka, but in our first segment, we talked to Valinda Rowe on the uh, Illinois Foyd card issue. You also go over to Illinois and teach classes, too, don't you? 
Yeah, my partner is a certified uh, Illinois instructor, and so we do classes over in Illinois usually once a month. Great. And well, you can book those on our site, too. Good to know. Is it CrossfireCCW.com? That's right. Is that the right website? All right, good. Hey, yes, sir. Lee Kropp, uh, we appreciate the, the great information today, and hopefully uh, people will take advantage of that, that uh, training you got coming up. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Uh, the Crossfire CCW survived the shoot uh, coming up, uh, and you go to CrossfireCCW.com to find out more details. More coming up on Second Amendment Radio and the Great Outdoors. We'll be right back. love me. You do. You love me. <laughs> Who are you talking about? You. <laughs> no, no. You keep saying you got so something bad. for I knew he wasn't talking to me. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> These boots are made for walking. Yeah. Well, it does make sense in Second Amendment Radio on the Great Outdoors. Uh, if you're going outdoors hiking or hunting or something, you need a good pair of boots. This segment is proudly brought to you by Chuck's Boots Superstores. Actually, no. Chuck's Boots. <laughs> we, we dropped the superstores, but they are super. Uh, 100,000 pairs of boots between the two stores and online at chucksboots.com. St. Peter's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. If you haven't been into a Chuck's Boots in a while... It's amazing how big these stores are. And it's not just hunting boots and hiking boots, work boots. They got biker boots. Uh, and Mark, I heard you say you're a deer hunter on the radio. I didn't know you were a deer hunter. I do uh, hunt them not very well, but I do. Every, <laughs> every November, I freeze my butt <laughs> off in the woods for four or five hours and usually come up empty handed, but that's okay. It's, yeah. the, it's the thrill of the hunt, right? I hear you also hunt with your vehicle as well as ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hit a deer on the way to work uh, this week, and uh, fortunately, the car nor the deer were injured. Uh, but it was a close call. Wow, yeah, made that, me wonder. That's so dangerous, and oh. that's why deer hunting is so important. That's right. We got to do that as uh, the urban sprawl happens. Uh, we do want to w- welcome in the owner of Chuck's Boots, Sean Lane. Uh, he is uh, changing Chuck's Boots on a very cool level, uh, including online shopping at Chuck'sBoots.com, which I think is outstanding because not everybody wants to get out, and you are coming to them via their computer. Uh, but the reason we wanted to have you on, Sean, was to talk about this. Huge side by side because I, I see trailers full of side by sides headed out to the country every weekend, and I'm like, man, I wonder. I'd, I'd love a, one, a racing one like this, or you know, a, a different model like this. You guys are giving one away, aren't you? Yes, we sure are. We're giving away a 2021 Polaris um, side by side General Deluxe 1000. Uh, pretty cool machine. Uh, kind of a sport bike crossover utility bike so absolutely it's very uh adaptive yeah I, I love it and you're you've teamed up with thoroughgood to do this the brand of thoroughgood this is these are my favorite work boots matter of fact i have a brand new pair still in the box from chuck's boots but uh i've learned that my work boots that are thoroughgood are and i used to call them thoroughbreds until you corrected me several times uh but i've worn these through so many big projects um so it's a great a great brand sean i don't know are you a hunter I am not an avid hunter. I have hunted in the past when I was uh, younger, um, but working retail all these years, I generally am working holiday season <laughs> hours in the hunting season, so it doesn't uh, work out for me very yeah, well. Yeah, that, that's a problem. So so I just have to ask, uh, Sean, what type of boots would one wear in one of these Polaris side <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know what? I have a side by side, and i I wear cowboy boots sometimes. Uh, I wear you know hiking shoes sometimes, just depending on the weather. Sometimes just like a rubber muck boot uh, yeah. or rubber boots of some kind. Um, if it's real nasty out. Yeah, and if you go to things like uh, Bricks Off Road or Flat and Nasty, uh, where the off road action happens. Maybe you don't wear boots at all. Maybe you don't wear feet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you don't wear footwear at all. Man, you know some of those places are a little bit too much for me. I'm more <laughs> of your laid back rider. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, the last time I was in uh, to Chuck's Boots in Fenton, Mark, I have to tell you, and you're probably going to go get some of these. Uh, they've got a shoe called a Hey Dude. Hey dude. Hey dude. Like hey Jude, but hey dude. Okay. Uh and I and Sean says these things are flying off the shelves. And are they still are they still taken like on the storm that you had talked about earlier? Uh even more. Uh we can't even keep them in stock. We have <laughs> literally none left. Um 
every time we get a shipment in, they're pretty much gone within a week. Uh, I actually, I told you I had to step out of a meeting to jump on this phone call. Uh-oh. I was actually in a meeting with, hey, dude. Are you buying, serious? <laughs> no, swear. Uh, in, in a meeting with, hey, dude, buying for uh, second quarter of 2022. What, what, so, why yeah. the craze? Why the craze about it? I mean, Crocs were a thing back then. I don't know if you carry Crocs. but These are like boat shoes. They're awesome. Yes, very similar to a boat shoe, but just extremely lightweight, very uh, breathable. Um, the they're on fire. I mean, <laughs> I've been in the footwear industry for 25 years. I've never seen a craze like this where you can have a three-year-old toddler wearing them and an 85-year-old great-grandmother wearing them at the same time and everybody in between. That's some good marketing. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. That's for sure. It's like the vaccine. It's uh, something for everybody. Well, you know, honestly, I, I've been I've been uh, to the uh, Chuck's out in uh, St. Charles County. I bought a pair of boots out there, and uh, I the it's overwhelming uh, to me to walk in sometimes and see the number of the selection you guys have, and it, it must just be a twenty four hour job for you to keep up with it. Yeah, it's a lot, uh, yeah, but that's great. I've been doing this a long time, so uh, you know it's it's not as bad as it might seem. But yeah, we have. You know, anywhere, depending on the time of year, anywhere between sixty and 70,000 pair in stock at each store uh, at any one time, um, just depending on what it is, whether it's a hiker or a uniform or a uh, ladies' western or a hey dude or a thorough good work boot. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for sponsoring Second Amendment Radio on the Great Outdoors, Sean. Maybe you'll get to go hunting uh, one day uh, in the future, but I know you do work your butt off. Uh, you're covering the two stores and online shopping. Again, if you want to win the side-by-side giveaway from uh, Thoroughgood and Chuck's Boots, simply go to chucksboots.com, get registered there, or you can go on to Chuck's Boots' Facebook page. Uh, But we just wanted to uh, take some time and just thank you for uh, being a part of this show. I appreciate appreciate the support. I know it's going to be a really cool giveaway, and the lucky winner is going to be... very very excited we're actually getting it custom wrapped right now like the american I'm... flag right yes yeah yes. nice wow you can see it if you go to chucksboots.com <sighs> classy. Right now. that's, that's just classy sean thank you man have a great rest of your afternoon okay all right sounds good you guys have a great day that's Thanks. awesome yeah, you know and cool. uh, and great supporters of uh, law enforcement and first responders my big dog spoker bash I, I went in and i said hey uh we're looking for donations and he gave us like six hundred dollars in gift certificates. Wow! I wow. mean, without even blinking. Uh, and a lot of first responders uh, shop there as well. So hunters, hikers, bikers, everybody. It's it's a great story. Whatever you need, we're glad to hear it. You know, I do, you mentioned my deer experience um, two times now. Like I, I live out West St. Louis County. Two, I see deer every morning. You know, I, I go to work early. I do the morning show, 97.1. I, I get up early. I'm, I leave uh, the house around 4. There are always deer along the road. I Normally, they just sit there. This morning, one decided he was going, he or she, she I believe, was going to cross the road. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, it didn't have horns, so I know it wasn't a, it could have been a button buck, I guess, and I just didn't notice it because I just saw it kind of nowhere, and it it ran up alongside of my car, bumped it, and then ran right back into the woods. I just got lucky. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, twice. I hit one a couple of years ago with the front bumper of the car. Thought I'd heard it. It stood up and ran off. That's They're St. Louis durable. County. Right. Yeah. 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 I grew up in southern Minnesota, and a buddy of mine had a Nova, like a really fast Nova, mm-hmm. and he got hit. And there were teeth left in the door, and there was <laughs> hair. I mentioned you mentioned hair in the grill. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was hair. There was the- there was hair on the front bumper of this car, and uh, the uh, deer poop or deer scat on the on mm-hmm. the front of it. I'm like, okay, that one didn't make it. Yeah, he hit it uh, hard. But mm-hmm. I got when I was listening to that story, you're hitting the deer. Um, it, it brought up a memory from my childhood. Uh, my dad and I, he had a TDY down in Del Rio, Texas. So we're traveling from Lowry Air Force Base, Denver down to Del Rio, Texas. In West Texas, we, we were driving through the night, and we got to this really hilly part in West Texas, and there were a hundred eyes. Yeah. A, a reflection from the headlights, and he slowed down to about 10 miles an hour because it was uh. they all just like were there, mm-hmm. and it frightened me so much. He didn't hit any of them, but man, we crawled through that area until we didn't see you know, him anymore. Like I was telling Mark this week, I was driving, taking my daughter to a school in Savannah, and we stopped at Hilton Head, and oh, we yeah. were staying there. And I, you want to get there? It was the middle of the night, and I was trying to get to our hotel, and it was 
nothing. I stopped counting at 72 deer. <laughs> right. Because you, you want to go 55 miles on the highway. It's a two-lane highway. But no, there are so many deer on the way. You don't want to hit and you don't want to hit This was him. on the way to Hilton Head. On the in, way to Hilton In the Head. low country, South Carolina. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not on, on the, Hilton Head. On, there aren't no, that many deer on out the On the way to the island. Okay. It, right. it also brought up two other thoughts, and I, I, I'll ask you, Mark, is... Who picks up the deer on the side of the road? Is it uh, Modot? The, is it Modot? Do it, they really do? They that? have seven days to do it. Okay, well, boy, they, there's some out there that long. <laughs> uh, and the other thing it brought up was a memory of a, a show called My Crazy Addiction, and uh, <laughs> this, this guy has not bought protein for his family or parties that he's thrown in 35 years. Roadkill? It's all roadkill. It's it, everything. They they'll they'll go even if it's been out there for day two, mm-hmm. day three. Well, it, it's it has to be a Missouri state road, like if it's part of a muni then they won't pick it up yeah, modot's okay. only it's responsible the for the highway of the state yeah well the guy in the show it didn't matter if it was two days out there or whatever they would cut off the bad part you know just, you know like you know uh, when you find bread with a little mold on it, you just uh, uh, i'm making uh, a sandwich stop. Uh, wouldn't go to that guy's party and he had some <laughs> reluctant people after of course he does the after they had the dinner oh mm-hmm. the, the chili was awesome and then they were like uh Guess yeah what you ate yeah possum <laughs> uh on a half shell Anyway, so yeah, it, it brought up some memories, and, and it's a problem. It's yeah, a problem. It, 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 hopefully, um, they're taking care of that because West County, it is a definite problem right now. I well, can let's tell you help them out Good in stuff. the fall. Yeah, yeah. we'll try. <laughs> Bo and I'll be trying anyway. Well, we will. Good. All right, Second Amendment Radio on the Great Outdoors. Please share this show and this podcast with everybody that you know that supports the Second Amendment uh, because we're always growing the show, right? Yeah, we love it. Uh, we love talking. You can tell I'm passionate about it. Bo's passionate about it. We love uh, traveling. I love hunting, uh, fishing, the whole thing. So we love covering it. Thanks for listening. And uh, on behalf of uh, Mark Cox, myself, Bo Matthews, and... Pew, pew. Carl Middleman. Middleton. Middleman. Man. <laughs> Middleman. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. See you, boys. See you, boys. Get more at 971talk.com. Razorback Armory isn't just a gun store, it's a true gun concierge. If you are looking for attachments, if you're looking for accessories, if you're looking for safety products, Razorback Armory is who you want to go to. They're in De Pair on Manchester Road, just a half mile east of 270. Razorback Armory, your full-service firearm shop that strives to be the area's premier destination for firearm enthusiasts. Stop in and introduce yourself to Brad, Kenny, and Jesse. Find them at RazorbackArmory.com and tell them Bo sent you. Why is there a harbor seal walking around the office? Oh, that's our new CEO. Come again? Well, apparently they didn't order through Easy Cater for the board meeting, and when the food didn't arrive, they kind of lost focus. Next thing you know? We have a seal as our CEO. Did I say something wrong? No, she just wants a mackerel. Here you go. Bad ideas happen when there's no food for the meeting. So make sure it's on time and as ordered from more than 80,000 restaurants. Now, Easy Cater. Thank you. I just got promoted. Order 24-7 on easycater.com.